All right, the next thing we're going to do now is we've got the both side panels on, on both sides of the barrel. We're going to fit the, the nose cap. So the first thing we want to do is to take the side panel off and get that out of our way. <clears throat> and if you notice on the bottom of the of the nose cap itself it's it's cast so that that point there fits down in between the barrels and then there's a big flat there so that uh, we can have a place to drill through and give a little body to it so the, the screw that goes through will hold it good and tight and then the step down here is the step that goes on over that little that little tab and that holds the the end of the the stick of the side panel down good and tight to the barrels now this little v that's cast in here isn't uh isn't quite down enough to to fit so what you want to do first thing is double check and make sure there's no chunks of lead laying in the groove and in this case there's a little too much lead in the very end so i'm going to take a file and a piece of coarse paper so i'm going to take a file has a safe edge on it and uh, just put it in here and take that extra lead off you see it comes right off very very quickly Right where the that little V part for the nose cap will go in, so that we'll have a nice snug fit. That sounds pretty good there. And then I will do the same thing with a piece of paper wrapped on it. Just the very, very tip that touches down, so that's where you want to be sure that it's down there. Nice, nice clean point, which we have there now, and then that point will go right down in there. Now, as you can see. The end here doesn't quite have the, it isn't quite small enough to go in. So what we've got to do now is to take this and file along the flats on either side to bring it down. It doesn't take very much to do it uh, so that it'll go down in good and snug against the barrel. Now, for those of you that may be fortunate enough to have a Mill machine sitting around. Uh, it's a lot easier to just mill that little edge off. And what I do is I just put a flat bar in the bottom here to guide the, to make it level, and I put a a little uh, piece of metal here as a 45 degree angle on it, and I tip that up at a 45 so that. Uh, That'll be at the, the right angle for me. And then it's just a matter of running the end mill right in, just right down on, on the top of this. And if you notice on these, one side is a little wider than the other, and that would be the side to take it off. But both sides will need a, at least a little bit of filing. But I'm going to just mill that off now. Now I'm just going to take 10 thousandths off of that and see if that's going to be enough. It doesn't take very much, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was going to do it. We'll tie it up and see. <clears throat> now 
now once we get it either filed or on the milling machine then we just take a piece of paper and we paper good sandpaper and clean that up so there's no little birds sticking up didn't take very much to do it unless the milling machine did all the work if you don't have the milling machine you'll have to do a little more filing but it can be done there now that should uh, that should be a fit, pretty fair fit yeah looks good now we'll do the other side <clears throat> now I've turned the barrels over and this of course is the rod side and this is the nose cap that has the groove in it and that will be going right on there so we're going to take take this side panel off set it here where it won't get broken once these are down to the finished size you got to be very careful where you put them because they're so so vulnerable to breakage when they're off the rifle now we put that on there and that looks just about the same as the other one and I actually took 25 thousandths off that other one it was a little more than I thought it would have to be but we'll do the same with this one put the panel side panel on and we're going to drill the holes and tap the holes for the nose cap so the first one we want to do is the one that has the flat side the non rod side and we'll place that on there and you always want to give that a tap Make sure that it's back tight, that that doesn't, especially when you're going, you're about to drill a hole. And then I want to put a clamp on that. And these clamps uh, really work well. And they keep out of your way. So put that clamp right on there. And then we can give that a little tap again just to make sure it is down tight. You can see we've got a good fit on that. And I don't know if we need that second clamp on there or not. We'll turn this up. Well, it wouldn't hurt to put it on there, so we're going to put it on. If it gives me enough room, I think it will. Yeah. All right. We've got the nose cap clamped on here, good and tight. And I'm going to put this into the drill press and uh, drill that from the other side. I just don't have the power to push that through, but uh, you might. And we're gonna use a, the drill bit we're gonna use here is a number 35 numbered drill. And that's, that is the, the same as the holes that are through between the barrels. going to fill that hole through and it's through. <clears throat> now we've got that hole drilled down through here. That's where our 440 screw will go, right down through there. So now we want to put the the other side to the nose cap on and clamp those together. Oh, I have to put the, the 
have the panel on first. loading stick in there. I don't want to bore a hole in that, so I'll get another stick to put in there in place. Get in there first. Put that there. Doesn't quite want to go in. That little tab is a little bit too long. Take a little off of that. Okay, I'll try it again. What happened was that little that little tab sticking out was touching on the end of that, keeping that from going in tight. And we. And make sure that goes in tight. Yeah, that looks better. Put that other stick on there. That'll just keep everything lined up. Also, give that a little tap. Make sure that's all the way in. Okay, now we get the bottom panel on. That in that looks a little better. Now we can clamp that up. All right, we got one clamp on there. Just gonna double check, make sure this is all the way back. Now I'll put the other clamp on. Now I'll just run this. I'm a 35 drill down through, and I'm just going to touch down on that opposite plate. Just make enough to make a, a little starter point on it so that the smaller drill bit doesn't slide around. Now we'll put in the. This, this is the drill bit for the 440 screw. It's a number 43 number drill. And that should drill right in and find the center of that hole. So it'll clear. For the thimble. Now we'll see if a, one of my screws will go and thread into that the way it's supposed to. Yeah, good. Now we'll take and countersink this flat side and screw it together. I don't know if you've noticed in some of my vices, I mill a little step down in there. So when you're doing inlays and things like that, you just set them in there and they just kind of hold themselves. It makes it easy. 
it's like having another hand. Yeah, well, did I kind of think? Let's we'll see how that looks. That looks good. So now I can take that over and bolt those two together. Okay. That nose gap right on top. Golly, I'm just gonna go and on the cap make sure it's good and tight. And tighten it up. That's all we're gonna do on that for right now. But eventually we're gonna come back, we're gonna draw some lines and match the match the brass up with the edge of the panel. And we'll see how it matches up on the other side. It matches right up. Looks good. Little mistake will come right out there. Now, <clears throat> once you get these all fit and all cleaned up and everything, then you want to measure how far they are back from the face of the barrel, and you want them both the same. So whichever is the the longer, you want to trim the end of that so that they're both the same. These are pretty close, just the way they are, but uh, you want to just make sure that they are, because that would look kind of odd. So that's one more job done. All right, we've got the thimbles all back on, the screws through from the other side. <clears throat> Put the loading stick back in. And there we are, another job finished. Loading stick side, there's the other side. Eventually, we'll have to sand this smooth to match up with the wood and all the, when we do our final sanding. But uh, for now, we've completed one more job. And on to the next. All right, here's one more job that we kind of skipped over, and now we've got to come back to it, is the trigger guard. Now, <clears throat> the trigger guard screws on here with one screw. That screw goes through the plate. The, uh, the trigger guard itself and into the rear swivel plate and that holds the front on and that that has to be made so that that will clear the barrel on the other side we also want to attach the back here and that will be attached just like a regular uh, trigger guard on a a regular single barrel rifle. It's got a tab on the bottom of the of the trigger guard itself. We've already got the hole mortised in there and then we have to inlet this piece here down in there. So first thing we want to do is make sure that there is enough width. Yeah and it is a little little skimp, skimpy. This wood on this side right here there's enough, but it would just be a sliver of wood there. So I think, in fact, I can see where I ground that off. I never did get up to that pencil line that I put on there. So I'm going to take this off and grind that back. That'll give us a little bit more wood on that side, and then it'll be even with the other side. <clears throat> All right, I've ground that back a little bit so that it'll... Uh, 
fit on. So now we just take and screw this back on here. Okay, look back here. We're looking good now. We have the even even amount of space on both sides. So what I'm going to do is center it. We have a little bit of play there, so I'm going to center it. Center it, and I'm going to mark that. Right there. And I don't want to go beyond there. I'm going to cut that mortise out. So now we'll take that off. And we're ready to start cutting that mortise in. Whenever I start a new mortise, I like to just check my <clears throat> my chisels that I'm going to use for sharpness and uh, these were still very sharp but it only takes a moment to I just ran it over the fine stone here and just run it on the strop several times and uh, that's all it takes and that is now super sharp you can see how it sticks on my thumb I'm going to use that one and I'm going to use this small one so I just go on to this fine stone now, I don't use a jig or anything for tuning these up every once in a while I put them back in the jig so I get the cut right but I just make a few strokes on on these And that's all it takes. Well worth the time. All right, now we're gonna and let this down a little ways. Now we've, because we've had to grind off the edge on this, we've taken the bevel off. We're gonna return that bevel before we're through. So we're only gonna inlet this in about half half the distance of that. And then we'll draw a mark on it, and then we'll put the bevel back on there for a finished edge. So <clears throat> we'll start right at the back edge here. When I, when I cut these in, I leave a little daylight next to the pencil line. And when the chisel goes in, it pushes it right over to the pencil line and you see a long straight line like this you think well why not use a much wider chisel but actually what I'm doing is when I'm going along I make the plunge cut and then I just move the chisel up about an eighth of an inch then move it up and just follow the crack an eighth of an inch at a time if you get a, a chisel that's too too wide it's it's too much pressure on the wood and you're liable to make a crack in it so you don't want to get too too energetic with it this end grain here always is running the wrong way so I just take enough at the very end to get started and it <clears throat> afterwards we'll go actually sideways on the cross grain now this can be done with a gouge
corner flat chisel. It's not that far. I would bet this <clears throat> this mortise almost almost finished. I just put a little bit of blackening on there that I'm gonna take off right there. And I think that's gonna go. But first we'll do a little scraping here. Always keep in mind for that guy that 200 years from now is going to look at it and say, wow, look at that. He made a nice clean bottom of his mortise there. What a craftsman. Looks good. <clears throat> now I'm gonna screw this down tight. Tap that back down there again. Yeah, it's touching on the trigger, so what we're gonna have to do is take a little off the inside of that. The bow and the <clears throat> trigger guard when we get it out. <clears throat> now I've got the the trigger guard <clears throat> all in, and I'm put this clamp on it to hold it down good and tight. And I'm going to run the scribe around the edge here. <clears throat> then I'll take the I'll take the trigger guard out and file the bevel on it. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to file that, that bevel. I can see the line there. And I'm going to file from that line up to the original, original bevel. Looks pretty good. file too, makes it easy. I just have to do it again. Eventually we're going to have to file the whole piece to, <clears throat> to get it uh, nice and smooth and polish it, but uh, I save that for drying time when I'm putting the finish on the wood. <clears throat> Waiting for the, the finish to dry, I work on the, on the hardware. Just some of the parts you have to do because it, uh, you have to make them fit. That ought to look pretty good going in there. Now you can see how I've put that bevel on it. As long as I get the file out, I think that will clear where that trigger was <clears throat> touching in the bottom here. Alright, <clears throat> I've tried that in there and the trigger, the trigger clears. So now it's just a matter of putting this on. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole through the stock here through that tab and that's what's going to hold that in there. So I'm going to lay this down on the outside like this. And draw that line just where that tab is going to be. So I don't miss it. 
what I try to do is I try to get the I try to get the hole further up into the stock than down here because this the closer it is to the edge it's more liable to, to break it out. So if I can get that that hole in right down here, it would be perfect. So that's what we'll do. We're gonna to have to put this in the in the drill press to uh we'll clamp that down and drill it. Okay, I'm all set up <coughs> to drill that hole. You can see I've got this clamped in tight. I put some leather on the top so it wouldn't make any mark up there. You can see the pencil line around where that tab was. And I made a little dot where I wanted the hole and we're right we're gonna be right on that dot. And you notice I've only <coughs> Let the drill bit out about five eighths of an inch because this is a, a curved surface here and if you leap put it out too long it has a tendency to bend and you and won't get a, a good hole so I'm going to just get it so we have at least an eighth of an inch hole and then I'll take the drill bit out and make it deeper Let's see how that works Okay, once you get the tip in, now we should start seeing some grass so it came quick. That's a number 52 drill. I have this stainless steel welding rod. <coughs> That I like to use it's uh, because it's stainless steel you don't have to worry about it rusting just put that in the hole now we can take our clamp off and we'll trim that up after we get it over to the other vise and that pretty much completes that part of it. Now you can see where we have made our pencil line for that tab. That's just where we wanted it to go in. Hopefully it was going to come out the other side. So we marked the other side and there it is. So if you take the time to set it up in a drill press or whatever. I know a lot of people do these by hand with a hand drill. And uh, I've uh, I've tried it years ago, but uh, it's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes you catch the edge of it and you break the drill bit off or whatever. But if you have a good a good vise and a good drill press, there's no no point in taking a chance. Also, <clears throat> you can see how we have our bevel on the back of the trigger guard, and it's right flush with the wood. When this gets all cleaned up, this is going to look quite nice. And uh, we're we're running out of jobs here on this rifle. It's going to be <clears throat> it's going to be a a rifle here before we know it. I think you can see them now, right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to design a little a very simple carving and. <clears throat> put the uh, the raised part in between the, the wormholes and hopefully when I lower the background I'll eliminate that uh, that wormhole there was a couple others here on the top of the comb here and I got rid of all those there were several places on here but the wood was so good I hated to just throw it away so I took the chance and use it and I think I'm going to get away with it alright ready to Give it a final sanding with some fine paper, rub it down with steel wool, and get the stain on it. That's always a fun part. It's the most rewarding when you see all the stripe coming out in the wood and the, the real beauty of the wood. Then while the stain is, is drying, we're probably going to put two, stain it two or three times, and I just use an alcohol stain. <clears throat> and then while 
that is drying in between coats. We'll go to work on some of the brass and uh, file that up and clean that up and polish it so it'll, by the time we get all the finish on the, on the stock, we'll have the, all the brass done and we just put it together and uh, brown up the, the metal parts and it'll be golden. I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> now we've got the light going across it. I see we've got a kind of an odd bump in here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take that down with the with the rasp. And I like to end up with the back edge of the cheek piece angling back this way so that that carving comes back and it it kind of just wants to circle around. When you're standing like this, you can actually feel it when you, when you make a long stroke going across it. If there's any little bumps in there you can you can feel it let's see a little more out of here and hopefully get rid of that I don't think we're going to though we take a little bit more off this comb here funny you look at this stuff the next day sometimes it looks totally different I really should have drawn this having last night before I quit but so often you look at it the following day and it's not quite as nice as you thought now this is a this is a carving that I I did uh, a while back and you can see it's very very simple very small and I think it would uh, it's not very complicated. I think that would fit on there nicely. And it looks like I might just get get it down below those wormholes. But uh, that's the one I'm going to try to to duplicate or do something close to that. And uh, I might just go ahead and put the same star in here too at the same time. But uh, we'll see. All right, I've, uh, I've come up with a drawing here. I'd like to let this for 24 hours and look at it later. I, I think it's all right. I, I did get around that. You can see that wormhole right there. So by the time I, I lower this background right in here, that should be pretty well gone. There's another wormhole right here on the edge of the butt plate. And when I lower this part back here, I should be able to lower this enough and I'll file the, the butt plate down a little bit, hopefully to get below that. If not, I'll have to come up with plan three. But I've got to do something with the back edge of the cheek piece here. I'll cut this back to about here. So, but the whole thing is I want it to just come and flow like a circle. And then I'll just put a, a little molding down below the bottom, a little wavy line. But I think with this carving up here and the lobe and all, and when I put a couple of straight edges in a roll in the top of the cheek piece, I think I'll cut this cheek piece down a little bit lower and put a... Uh, a roll on what I call uh, it'd be a, like that. I think that uh, I think it'll all tie in together and get rid of those wormholes. I already got rid of, yeah, rid of one of them that was up in here but just by sanding, and there's just a tiny piece of one right there. But uh, I think I can sand a little bit more here, and then I'll probably I'll probably use that same uh, same design here with the with the star. Uh, with a silver inlay and I think that'll tie it all without without getting too fancy. First thing I want to do is to 
change the angle of the back edge of the cheek piece and get that more flowing in the line with with the drawing and then once we get this down I think I'll add a partial leaf to the back side here to give it a little balance in here but we'll see what it looks like once I get once I get this cut back sometimes when you start to work on one of these things ideas just seem to pop out at you I just put a little sandpaper on this to so I can finish the drawing yeah that's looking a little better Now we can finish the inside of this drawing here. If this comes down in here, we want to keep this going like that. Bring this down. And bring this down. Maybe we'll do one more, one more leaf. And right there. doing this <clears throat> sometimes you erase your lines while you're sanding and after it's gone it looks better than when you had it on there or you get some other ideas so if you do just change it all right I got a, a bigger dowel conforms to that a little bit better I just take some of that nice paper and I just clip a piece off with the scissors it's kind of hard on the scissors so when you do that don't use your own scissors you want to use your wife's scissors I wonder if she knows they've gone yet could have taken that bump off of there before I started the drawing, I guess, would have been a little smarter. More interested in getting rid of the wormholes. Now I think we can put our drawing back. Now, when I'm getting ready to start to do a carving, as far as the actual carving of itself goes, I lay out, I have this, this board here with a bank of gouges that are, are laid out uh, in order of the radius so that I don't have to be shuffling through a box or looking for the right radius. If I reach for a certain radius, and I can usually get it on the first or second try. But if I get this one and I try it and it's not quite, I know I'm usually within one or the other, so I just go up one or back one for, to match up to the drawing. And I keep it right close to my, to my carving so that uh, I don't have to walk across the, the shop to get it. And I also lay out <clears throat> another bank of, of uh, gouges over here and uh, those are mostly those uh, 
those fishtail or beaver tail uh, gouges that I like so much. And I usually uh, sharpen them all up just before I start to, to carve so I don't have to stop right off. But as I, I'm using them, I will quite often stop and just give them a few straps just to tune them up. I'm going to start right here and start plunge cutting all these lines and just go right up and around and we're going to get all those lines plunge cut before we do do anything else. As I said earlier on, this is not supposed to be a carving tutorial. I just did this carving on the whims, so I'm not going to video every minute of it, but I want to do enough of it so you'll get the right idea. So here we go. Now you can see I'm just sliding that gouge around on that circle. And as long as it stays on the line, I'll just keep sliding it. Now that's about as far as that, that can go on that line. We're getting a long lid on our <coughs> carving here. Going along pretty nice. See, I don't always stay on the lines. Like right there. That's <clears throat> something that looked a little better to me. Now, you can see where I'm. I've been making some progress. You can see the stamped in line. We've got everything stamped in down here, all the way up to here now. Just got this little bit left here. Got one little leaf there to stamp in. Then we can start taking out background. But I did get, I get that, <coughs> I did get that cut. There's that wormhole right there. So this wood here will be removed, so that'll get rid of that one. And uh, there was another one there somewhere that I saw. Maybe I sanded it out, but it's looking good so far. Okay, I just finished up doing the plunge cut. So now the whole, the whole drawing has has the plunge cut now the next thing we're going to do is to come back and take off the background here and lower the background so that this will just jump out at you and uh, hopefully we've gotten rid of those wormholes but uh, we'll see all right, we're going to start to remove the background on this. So uh, I think I'll start right here in the back edge of the cheek piece. And uh, normally I do that with with my my carving knife, my what I call my Bivens carving knife. And I will do a lot of this. I hope I will if I can hold on to it with my hand. If not, I'll have to do it with the with the gouge and chisels. <clears throat> so here we go. This section I'm doing here, the back edge of the cheek piece, it's all end grain, so you want to be sure you have a super sharp chisel. And I just went over and I stropped this a bit, just to be double sure, but it is really sharp. Actually, I think I will try my knife right here
you notice I'm, <clears throat> I'm not dragging this knife along with my right hand. I'm pushing it with my thumb on my left hand, which gives me much more control. You can see how that's coming right off there nicely. I left a little bump <clears throat> in the back of these with the stocks here. <clears throat> just just a little bit to you can carve any rifle. I don't care. Any finished rifle at all, but if you have a little bump on them, it makes it a little easier. I'm just leaving this video running long enough to give you an idea how all this works. That nice clean cut coming out of there. Now you can see how really quick this moves along. And you've got the right tool. When I'm carving, I'm continually changing sides on the bench. Without a video person here, you know, running the camera, it's terribly time consuming. All right, we're still at it here, taking the background down, and I just thought I would show you another little section of it so you know how it's done. This is a, a gouge that has very, very flat radius to it, and you see you can, you can go cross grain, uh, with it, or you can go with the grain with it. And we have quite a bit of wood to take off right here. works better actually cross grain than it does with the grain but you don't want to you don't want to get when you get down close to the finish you don't want to get any chip outs like that of course we're nowhere near the finish here yet but it's a lot easier to to not put them in than it is to try to fix them afterwards. When I get down close to the butt plate, I'll have to do that with a, with a regular file. Because I'll, I'll have to take a little bit of that but plate off. And I should have all this all this background pretty well off by quitting time today. So I'd say this has been a pretty good day's work so far. We're not done yet. Still got another hour. And that's just about what I need to to finish. Once we get the cutting done, then we'll scrape all this background and make it really, really flat. <clears throat> well, I scraped some of the background. And I'm going to see if I can get this this piece down. This wood is high in here, so that's got to come down. I'm going to have to take off some of the butt plate to do it, which is good because I think it'll go down below that, that wormhole that's in the edge, so we'll just try that. I 
to be careful not to hit my carbon. All right, I've got all the background lowered and uh, flattened out, and I've done most of the scraping. I've got just a little bit scraping left to do here. And when you're doing the scraping, really, you're, you're just barely taken off a real light shaving of wood. And as I've said before, I don't use scrapers. I, I, I use a very, very sharp flat chisel. And it seems to work good for me, but a lot of people like the scrapers. But this will do everything that I want to do. I've gone over pretty much all of it. I'm just taking out any of the little sharp edges that might still be sticking up. I don't do the, the only thing left now on, on this carving, the same as on the wrist here, is to sculpt out the inside part of these leaves and establish so that they, they look three-dimensional. And I don't do that until I get the whole gun all sanded. And the reason for that is when you're doing all the sanding here, you're very liable to hit the, hit the uh, carving itself. And if it's all carved in, in detail and you hit it, you're going to ruin it. So I wait till after everything is sanded just before I'm, I'm going to stain it. Then I'll go back and sculpt that out. So, uh, I won't show you the whole sculpting of all of it, but we'll come back to it enough just to give you an idea of what, what that entails. <clears throat> now for sanding, I'm going to start right here at the, at the frizzing panels. Get this side here. Now, some people like to leave this flat with a sharp corner on it right here. And uh, there'd be some inlays go here where these screws are. <clears throat> So that the, the screws don't wear into the wood but uh, that'll come out you can do that whether you leave it square or whether you make it round but the first thing that I'm going to do is to sand these grooves on the sides here and uh, because those are just rough cut and get those smoothed out good and then I am going to round take the corner off this and make it a little more of a roundness to it and then get back to the prison mortise and, and finish this up. Then I will put the finished sandpaper on it and take this panel off and set it aside and go to the other side. But the first thing we'll do is this. And I just take a, a small section of wooden dowel. You can't see All those little nicks and grooves, unless you have that light going across it, it's so important to have the, the work right up, right at your face level. You can see I'm standing here, I'm standing up straight, not all bent over, I couldn't, couldn't hack that very long. I want to make sure that this, you sand this right out to the nose cap, make sure it ends up at the same level as the nose cap. I just keep, just keep rolling the sandpaper up on the dowel. So I always have a fresh piece. When you get out to the, to the nose cap, 
You want to sand this go right out onto the nose cap so that you have a, a good tr transition from the wood to the to the metal. You're very, very close, but you want to pay particular attention to that and get it down with the coarser paper. This paper is 120 grit, and that will cut pretty fast. This one is a brass nose cap. The, uh, the steel, steel ones take a little bit more, but the brass cuts down very, very quickly. We're also gonna trim off the brass. The edges here is a little bit wider than the wood. So we'll trim that back. We'll do that with a file. After we get this shaped and clean on the edge. It's also a little higher on the top here. So we'll have to take and, and file the top down to match the, to match that. And then if we curve the top of that panel, which I'm going to, course we will have to curve the, the brass too but that will uh, that'll curve just as easy as the wood <clears throat> when you get up around the the frizzing panels here we've got it pretty well shaped there now but we just have scratches in there to, that we want to eliminate these little needle files work really good this one is round on one side and flat on the other and you can really get in into the corners really nice with that i'm not going to spend too much time on the point here because we're going to end up rounding this but i do want to do this part here and that's when i use the round side of the and you can see i know i keep saying some of the same things over and over again Somebody might call that nagging, but it's very important. You see where the light is right here? It's right here in my face all the time. The work is right up here where I can get it right in front of my face so I can, I can really see it, light going across it so I can see the, the scratches. You can't fix what you can't see. All right. <clears throat> Our inlays are in for the side panel, and I have uh, sanded down the panel itself with 220 and 320. Made it good and smooth here, so you can't feel any any change in the between the wood and the and the metal. And uh, as I said, I use 220 and then 320. And uh, the next thing I will do with it is rub it very vigorously with 4 rot steel wool. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, oh, that's not good. The steel wool gets in the grain and will rust at a later date. But... If you do, if you do your sanding with 320 or even finer, uh, there won't be a problem of the steel wool sticking in into the grain. And I've never had any problem with it, and I've done it for for years. But uh, if you don't want to use the steel wool on it, just go to some finer paper. But I rub it with the steel wool in between. Uh, in between, when I stain it, I rub it again with steel wool quite vigorously, and I stain it three or four times sometimes to get the depth I want, and I rub it with the steel wool in between every one of those coats. And then when I put the finish on, I do the exact same thing, and uh, I've never had any problem with steel wool. I have the other side panel, the opposite side, all, all sanded and finished. And now I'm just ready to start giving this 
side with the thimbles is final sanding. And I'm using the 120 here at the uh, very tip to, so that I can cut the wood down to match to match into the nose cap itself. There's a little more wood than I want to sand away with 220 paper. So I'll use the this of course it won't take me so long. They always say there's enough to do without making it any harder on yourself than necessary. Now I just have this side left. It's got a fairly good step up in it, so this will take a little sanding. And then I'll switch over to the, the 220 and the 320. We've got this pretty well sanded now. I'm down to 320 grit. It's just about finished everything right up to the lock panel. I think that's looking looking pretty nice. I had to step down, put some 120 down in here. It was still a little little bit high. The paper I had just wasn't coarse enough. And you know how I am with coarse tools and sharpness and tools. Same thing applies to the sandpaper. Sandpaper is pretty cheap. I cut it in little small strips like this. It lasts quite a bit if you get good, good quality sandpaper. But I think that's I think that's pretty good right now. That's going to pretty much finish up the front end in this this rifle. I could uh, all there's left for me really to do on on the side panels in the barrel would be to steel wool it down, and then it's ready to, to stain. And uh, the devil might even want me to do that this afternoon. Really, it's ahead of time, but uh, I always get anxious to see what the the curl is gonna. If the wood is as good as I thought it was when I took it off the wood pile, this this wood is really, I think, is exceptionally good wood. I've had. It's time to to shape the the end of the patch box. I've taken that down a little bit. I've drawn the lines on it to guidelines. You notice they're tapered. They're wider at the back than the front. Gives a little, little uh, nice classy shape there. And what we're going to do is put a groove down through the middle so there'll be a roll on the top and a roll on the bottom. And then we'll cut a groove down on the underside of the, of the cheek piece so that that will end down there. Then we can finish shaping the molding that is going to go under that. But the first thing that I like to do is to cut a line across the top where this line is here. And uh, once I cut that in, then I will round that little little bit over into, into the line. Now you can do this with a, with a mallet or, <clears throat> or you can do it by hand. I can see that curl coming off the end of the of the gouge. Yeah, that's a pretty good indication that the gouge is sharp. All I need here really is just a starting line. Once I get that little line, I have this little little file, double cut file, very thin. 
and I can put that in there. It's pretty damn straight, but this will make it absolutely 100% perfectly straight. Now I'll bring that round edge right up, right up to that line. Now I've got a good straight starting off spot. <clears throat> now I got that little fine line and I may put that in a little, little bit deeper later. But uh, if you notice, that line is pointed right at the, the end, the tail end of the, of the lock mortise, the tail end of the lock, I should say. And if you put a straight edge on the top of the, of the uh, lock face itself, you can see that's the same height from here in a straight line back there. And this stock has a quarter inch cast off. So this, this really gives you a nice feel when you pick that up. <clears throat> now, next thing I'm gonna do, uh, maybe I'm gonna cut that groove out of the center and it starts off with a fairly wide fairly wide groove. Which grain is going the other way. So we don't argue with the wood grain. Most of this is going to be done with files. This will give me a start so that it'll, it'll guide the file from going out over the line. And we'll swap down to a smaller, smaller gouge. small get a, a rasp it'll cut part of that all right you got a nice little round rasp good coarse cut on it won't be able to go too far with this Yes, that's about as far as we can go with that. We'll end up with some sandpaper. Sandpaper on a some sort of a dowel or a drill drill rod or something. Doing these Cheek piece ends. I like I like doing it. It seems to uh, take shape pretty fast. Now we've got a smaller actually that's not small enough.
That's better. Once you get a, a line cut down through there with your gouge, it acts as a channel there to keep your your rasp or your file going straight. Getting hot. There's a little wave going up over that and down the other side. I think that's probably deep enough. <clears throat> now, we're going to want to going to cut a groove, another groove, right down here, I don't know if the camera can pick that up or not, there, <clears throat> now we'll cut a groove down in here, Probably. Probably about like that. And you can see this, the molding. After we get this groove in here, this molding here will, of course, be lowered down. And we'll bring this line here, nice, nice curved line. Something's got a little shape to it out here and back. We might even put some sort of a little tip on it or something. I don't know, we'll see when we get to it. And this line here will come out and just kind of connect right onto this. But we'll get to that when we get to it. And I'm gonna have to lay this back over the other side so I can cut this in. <clears throat> I've got this flipped around now so that it's in the position for the camera and me. That's <laughs> quite slow on this. Natural degeneration in your eye, the lines look like a wave. So when I'm cutting it, when I have to cut a straight line, I close my left eye. <laughs> line straightens right out. <laughs> a little more. You just want enough to guide the... To guide the gouge. The chisel cuts it a lot quicker than the gouge. I mean the uh, gouge cuts, cuts it quicker than the than the rasp. That's enough to get me started on that anyway. <clears throat> now I get my round rasp. Which one do I want? I guess that size will work good. Just taking a regular round rasp and bent the end up, put a little handle on it, makes it easier to hold on to. Funny how you adapt. Years ago, I never had any problem with holding on to.
Do what you have to do. It's getting down there pretty good. Now you can start to see what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth this up so we get a nice clean curve going right over into the other the other groove. Do it just a little bit more here. The more accentuated you make this, the better it looks. I want to go hit our carving. bottom this piece I'll round up to match that probably best do that with a piece of paper Now, that's pretty near there. We'll be doing some work down here in this end. When we do this carving, we'll cut that off and concave that so it goes down into the carving. And then that molding will, will drop around. But uh, that gives you an idea of, uh, of what we've done, how quick that happens. <clears throat> All right, we're going to design this little piece under here. This isn't going to be much of a designing job. Some of these I do quite fancy. I put all sorts of leaves on, but this one is this one is going to be a hunting rifle. So I want to. I don't necessarily want to get dead center in the middle because the the stock gets wider down here. So I want it to be a little heavier on the back end. So I I'm, I'm saying that the middle is in. Not the middle, but where I want it to be is there. I don't think I want that to go any lower than than about there. Now we're going to come off this volute here, and, I don't, and I, <clears throat> eventually we're going to bring this corner down to match this. So we we really can't go above that corner. So we'll just bring this down here, and I don't want a point. So we'll just have a around let's kind of scribble it in here and have it come up down right on this line there take that line off don't need any extra lines And actually cut this better than I can draw it. 
but you can see that little ridge line coming right right down here and it all kind of joins onto this carving and this carving up here so it all becomes part of the same design now we just cut that in Now I want to get a really nice smooth curve on the bottom, so I'm gonna I'm gonna plunge cut just the bottom of this circle here. And let this gouge fall it up just a little way. About half the width of the gouge. Oh man, I totally seen that. And the rest of it I'm going to cut with the knife. So this is good. I want it up just a little bit. blocking the camera on this but there's nothing I can do about that actually I'm going to put my other glasses on I'll show you a few more of my high tech tools this is the block I have the curve in so I'm just going to I'm just going to lay that in there I'll put the block in the vise and then I'll lay this round dowel in it and I'll give it a little whack with a hammer, and that should give me just enough curve to go in there. We'll see if that happens. Okay, there it is with, with my slight curve. If I curve it too much, I can always put it in the vise and squeeze it down a little bit, but it seems to be pretty good that way. Those are my two little marks, and I'll, before I forget, I'm going to mark the front on this because that uh, careful as I am filing these out they're not always a mirror image end for end in fact on the back side just in case I scrub that off I'm going to take my scribe and I'm going to put a put a scratch down the back side I've got that scratch mark on the back side so that I always know that 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 is the front of that star. Now, we're, all we have left to do here now on this side is to give the wood a good, very brisk rubbing with a steel wool, four-aught steel wool. And I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not, but you can see the that very subtle shine on the wood as the steel wool I think the steel wool has a tendency to not only take any of the little fine hairs that might be coming up out of the wood but I think it has a, a tendency to uh, burnish the wood also and I'm going to do this all all on both sides that right now if you feel this right here and you feel this down here you can feel the difference this is just just ever so smooth when we put the stain on it that will raise some of the grain again and we're going to do the same thing all over again i'm going to do that on the on the whole rifle i've just got to finish with the steel wool down on the, the buttstock. You can see that the carving is done. I put the star inlay in. 
I actually uh, did uh, end up epoxying that in there with, uh, I, I don't mean epoxy, I glued it in. I colored the glue a little bit and uh, put the little little uh, bobs on the back of it, press it in tight, and then uh, sand it down flush. Or just, I, I like to leave them just a little bit uh, high from the actual surface of the wood. But uh, when I stain that, that's all going to blend in together. That's why I like using the alcohol stain because you can just keep working it in until it everything comes up to the color that you want. And right now, uh, I just talked with the owner of this rifle. Uh, yesterday, and he said he'd like to have a little silver wire around the the uh, sliding wood patch box. So if I'm going to put the silver around it, it's just a very thin line and a, just a little leaf on both sides. So I think if I'm going to do that, I really should put a little carving on the on the patch box, which will just uh, be very small, very simple. And uh, that pretty much wraps it up. But uh, I'm going to finish rubbing it all down with the uh, steel wool now. Of course, when I get to the carving, I don't want to I don't want to rub it too hard because I'll I'll lose the definition of the carving. Now I've got to, I'm going to sand this. I haven't had the, <clears throat> the tang out for quite a while. So I'm going to sand this with the 320 paper, 220 and then 320 paper, and then rub it down with the steel wool. So uh, I'm going to take this tang out. Now I just want to show you this tang fits very, very tight, but just like the locks and, and the side plate does. So that, that little trick I had mentioned to you, well, putting a bevel on the front edge on the underside of the of the tang will help you to get it out. There's no way to, to grab it, to lift it out. So again, you take off your <clears throat> take your frizzing plate off. That exposes the end of the of the tang. And then <laughs> you take your buddy's chisel, <laughs> don't use your own chisel, and you put that in there on that little bevel and then out it comes very nicely. You can see the, that, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's just the ever so slight bevel on the bottom edge there and it doesn't hurt anything and, and it just saves you a lot of grief later on. But now I can go ahead and finish sanding the very top of this and then steel wool it, and then uh, we're getting very, very close to time to put the stain on. A steel wool the top edge. Got to stay away from the, the carving. If anything, you can just brush it slightly. But you can see how vigorously I'm, I'm rubbing that flat area, keeping away from the the carving. Now once I once I get the stain, the first coat of stain on here, I will go back over it with the steel wool again and rub every bit of it. And while I'm doing that, I will be watching for scratches and and little nicks or something that doesn't look quite right. And uh, that's the time to fix them. When the stain is on there, the alcohol stain does raise the grain up a little bit. And that's why you rub it back with the steel wool. But when you're doing that, you can see every tiny scratch and blemish that is in here. And that's the time to remove them. And then once you, you know, either scrape it with your scraper or a little piece of sandpaper. And I'm talking about really fine scratches. And then dust it all off, and then you can put another coat of your uh, stain. That's why I like the alcohol-based stain. And you can go over it and over it time and time again and rub it back. To uh, If you get it too dark, you can just rub it back. Or you can even put some alcohol in a rag 
and just wipe wipe it right over and that will dilute some of the stain that's on it but uh, when we get to the staining part and the rubbing part I'll show you a little bit more on the technique of the of the stain itself <clears throat> now I'm just sanding this part the lower part here and uh, I realize that this brass is in absolutely flush with the wood and I don't like that I like that to be just just a little bit proud so that you can clean it <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is to take it off and just sand the top edge here down just a little bit when you put the finish on inside it's going to raise it up a little also but uh, not quite enough but I'm going to take that off now yeah I've got that back on now and you can just barely feel it when you run your finger across and that's right and that'll when I get the finish in there that will raise it up just a little bit more and that's just exactly the way I want it the other day when we were cutting this <coughs> this uh, molding in here I had mentioned that I leave it wide until I get the the uh, toe plate on and then I bring the the groove right up to the edge of the toe plate so you have a nice neat uh, finish on the end of that. So one more little job done. <clears throat> 